So in this video, I'm going to talk about different cycloalkene stabilities. And so what we're going to talk about is how many carbon rings are most stable and essentially if it's trans or cis isomers that are more stable. And so here I've written that the cis isomer of 5, 6, and 7 membered cycloalkenes are more stable than the trans isomer. And additionally, only rings with at least 8 carbons can accommodate a stable trans double bond. And so as you can see down here, the 3 and 4 carbon rings that I've drawn, they look a little funny and they're really unstable due to a lot of angle strain. And so as a result, you're rarely ever going to see three or four carbon rings. Like, they're going to be really rare and unlikely to form. Now on the right side, I've drawn five, six, and seven carbon rings. And I've drawn these rings as cis isomers. And this is due to the fact that cis isomers are more stable than trans isomers. If you have a five, six, or seven carbon ring, you're always going to have a cis isomer the trans isomer will not form. And if you want to see this for yourself, you could take a model kit and try and make a trans isomer. It's really hard to make and it looks really funny. And so as you can see here, I've drawn an eight membered ring. And so here would be an eight member ring that's a cis double bond. And on the right would be an eight member ring that has a trans double bond. And so very large rings can have a trans double bond and it will be stable and form. And so that pretty much sums it up for the cycloalkene stability. What you need to remember is that three and four carbon rings will not have double bonds. They'll be really rare and highly unstable. But five, six, and seven carbon rings can have double bonds, but they are more stable if it's cis and most of the time, the vast majority of the time, you're going to have the cis isomer for carbons, I mean for rings with five, six, or seven carbons. And then if you have eight or more carbons in a ring, you can have either a trans or cis double bond in the ring because very large rings can have both and be relatively stable. And so in the next video, I'm going to talk about Brett's rule, which is essentially a rule for having a bridged bicyclic compound. So it's just a molecule that has two rings in it. And so we'll talk about that in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful or liked it, please be sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button below.